Welcome back to this episode of Home Built Workshop. Today, I'm gonna take this busted guitar amplifier foot switch and turn it into something useful for my guitar ring. In case you guys didn't know, I play guitar. One of the things I do is play in a local cover band and we cover rock songs from the 90s and 2000s. When we're doing a gig, we don't use amplifiers. We all use a digital processor of some sort that plugs directly into the PA and that helps us eliminate having to haul around big, heavy, bulky amps. The processor that I've been using has a lot of inputs for different foot switches and control pedals. One of the pedals that I've been using is this little homemade momentary foot switch that controls some parameters just when I press this button. I don't have to click it on or off. I just hold it down and let go when I need to turn off the specific effect. It connects to the processor with just a standard instrument cable, but my processor actually has stereo inputs so that I can control a couple different parameters with the same cable. So what I want to do is take this busted pedal, which actually does have a stereo cable, and convert it over for use with my processor. So I already tried to rewire this foot switch to work with my processor the way I want it to, but the cable is bad and I can't get the right connections because I believe this jack is bad. So I'm gonna take this apart, we're gonna rewire it so that I can attach and detach the cable just like I can with this little box. Now I do realize that this project is very specific and not everybody's gonna get something out of it and that's okay, but it is a project that I'm working on so I thought I'd share it with you guys and hopefully you enjoy it. First thing I'm gonna do is take this switch apart, remove the cable and the two foot switches. We'll throw this in the trash. Now I left some of this cable on here because I'm gonna use that when I connect these new switches to the jack. Just gonna pull that insulation off. And there's my wires already there to connect it up. Now at this point, I could just put the new switches in, solder everything together, and it would work just fine, but I can't leave stuff alone. We're gonna sand this down and see if we can't do something cool with the finish. And now I'll head over to the bell grinder where I have a surface conditioning belt installed. Surface conditioning belt is basically a Scotch-Brite belt. It gives kind of a cool finish to metal. Once I have it all sanded good, I'll wipe all the dust off and give it a couple of coats of clear. I'm using a matte enamel clear, just a regular spray can. Now I've got two coats of matte clear on here. The clear kind of took away some of the brushed metal look. Maybe a gloss would have worked a little bit better. But that's how we learn things. We try stuff, see how they work, and we move forward from there. Now I'm gonna try something else. I'm gonna try one of these water slide decals that I use on the headstock of my guitars. And I'm gonna try to put that guy right here on the back. Now I'll just give that a little bit of time to dry and then apply a couple more coats of clear to seal it all in. Now that the clear coat is dried, I can see that over the water slide decal, it's yellowed just a little bit. I don't know if you'll be able to pick that up on the camera or not, but it has just the slightest yellow tint to it. I'm not too concerned with that slight discoloration. It was kind of an experiment anyway, so I'm gonna move ahead and get this thing assembled. First, I'll install the jack in the same hole where the original cord came out. I'm using a standard TRS jack. This is a stereo jack. I'm gonna replace one of these switches with a momentary switch. So I'm gonna disconnect one of the switches. The switch that I'm replacing is a momentary switch. I wanna be able to select certain parameters on my processor with just a momentary press. The other switch is just a regular click type. And it looks like I'm not gonna be able to get in there to solder the connections on the jack, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull that back out. And I'll just strip a couple of the wires so that I can prepare everything for soldering. Now when you're working with a stereo jack, or any jack for that matter, you need to know which terminals go to which portion of the plug. So a standard stereo TRS connection stands for the tip, the ring, which is this middle part, and the sleeve. 
The sleeve is your ground. So we're working with the tip and the ring. When you plug it in, you can see that different terminals contact different parts. This long section right here is your tip. The shorter one, which contacts the center section, is the ring, and then your sleeve is inside, which contacts this. As long as you know that this is the tip, you can follow this up through the insulators and around to this connection. You can follow the ring and see that it goes to this connection. That leaves us with the sleeve for the last. So we're gonna connect our black wire to the sleeve, our red wire to the ring, and the white wire to the tip. Because I already know on my processor that that's the way I need to have them set up to do what I need to do. Now if you were doing it from scratch, it probably wouldn't matter, but I already have some parameters programmed that call on the signal being sent to the tip. And that is all the connections. Now I can just put everything back in place, tighten all the nuts down, and try this out. Now if we wanted to test this out, I've got my multimeter set to continuity with just an audible signal. So now I'll take the cable, I'll plug it in. That one's good. So now I've got the pedal inside, I'm gonna plug in my cable. And let's try this out. So I press the momentary button. And I can see right here, those lights are switching. So I know that momentary is working. But when I press the on off switch, nothing changes. I've got some parameters set up that are supposed to go to that button. Nothing happens. So I believe I have just learned something about my processor that I did not know before. Apparently it wants to see a momentary switch on both channels. I thought that I could just put an on off to control one of the parameters either on or off, but it wants to see a momentary on both sides and then you can set that parameter whether it's turning something on or off or if it's just a momentary. So I'm gonna head back out to the shop, replace that second switch with another momentary and we'll test this out again. So I'm now back, I have both of these foot switches replaced with a momentary switch. And just in case you're wondering, the switches that I'm using for this unit, these are a, a normally closed foot switch. Apparently these BOSS effects units, not just this, but most BOSS units that can take an external foot switch, they like to see the normally closed foot switch. So that's what I've got in there. So now we'll plug this guy back in, we'll verify our operation. So we put the first one, you can see the lights changing here. And now I can press the other one and you can see that there's a light here that's coming on and off when I press the button. So now we got stuff blinking when I press both buttons. So that tells me that these are good to go. And so there we go. Starting off with a busted foot switch that was completely unusable, even for the piece of gear that it was designed for, to turn it into a cool custom wired effects box to control my processor. This is gonna be really cool. I'm looking forward to getting everything fine-tuned and dialed in so that I can use the different options. Now, just in case you're wondering why I decided to add a jack to the back and have a separate cable that I can plug in rather than just hardwiring everything, well, number one, I don't like the hardwired ones because you can, what do you ever do with the cables? They always end up getting wrapped around the box and pulling and strained on and it ends up ruining the cable. Hence the pedal we started with. I like it being separate because if you ever have an issue with a cable, you can just get a new cable, plug it in and you're good to go. And I always carry spare cables with me anyway, so if I ever have an issue, I can just quickly grab another one, plug it in, and everything should be okay. And if I ever have an issue inside the box, I don't have to worry about the cable when I'm soldering and unsoldering anything to make any repairs if necessary. I just like being able to replace individual components and pieces. I've used several control pedals like this, Plus, almost every single guitar effects pedal has jacks where you plug in your cables. They don't come with cables already attached to them so you can string things together. And I kind of look at this the same way. Although this is not an effects pedal, 
I still like being able to plug in my cable separately. Probably the last reason I can think of that I like having them separate, I think in most towns it's going to be a lot easier to go find an individual instrument cable than it is to try to find a whole replacement foot switch. If you needed something last minute because yours broke and you had, had to perform or something, I think this is a lot easier to find if I had a bad cable than it is if everything's hardwired and I can't just replace the cable. So thanks a lot for watching this video, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. I know I enjoyed building it, and I definitely am gonna enjoy having this as part of my guitar setup. If you got something out of this, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Social media links and website links are down below in the description. So guys, until next time, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget guys, I have lots of other videos. Some of them are right here. You can go ahead and click on them. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel as well as my second channel, Inside Home Built Workshop, for some behind the scenes info. Try to post updates over there on that site, so check it out.